Hi guys, welcome back for another video. I'm Jess and I'm one of the creative designers here at Sizzix. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to make a gorgeous flower bouquet using the amazing Gardenia die from chapter two, 2022. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to make it up in paper, sculpting foam and crepe paper as well. So you've got tons of options. Don't forget to check out our other videos across all of our social media surrounding any of our floral makes. There's tons to pick from, so there's loads for you to have a look at and like and share and comment on this one and all the others and don't forget to stay tuned to the end and I'll share a discount code with you guys on everything that I've used and shared today. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna be using the Gardenia flower today. And this comes with four die set pieces, um, or pieces in the die set, should I say. Um, but you actually get a few more cutouts than just the four separate pieces. So you get four smaller sections, three medium sections, and one large section, and your leaf. Um, and obviously when we're making flowers, we normally work from smaller petals to large petals. So you'd work this way out. Um, and you want to cut multiples of all of the petals and then as many leaves as you kind of want to add on. So I'm gonna do mine in paper or cardstock first. And I have pre-cut quite a lot of mine already, but I'm just gonna cut out just a few extras. I've got them all hiding underneath here. Um, so I've got quite a few cut out. I've got some more underneath as well, but I am gonna cut out two more of the larger petal just because I need a few extra. So I'm gonna cut out two at the same time because I can do at least, um, well, probably maximum two layers with the uh, Big Shot Fold Away, which I'm gonna use today. And I'm just using some of our ivory cream cardstock from the Muted um, Cardstock Pack. You could also get this kind of shade in our neutral cardstock as well. And I'm just gonna roll that through. Oh, there we go. And pull that out. So I've got two there already, but you're gonna want about six of the larger ones. And then I normally say cut these two pieces about three times. So um, three times four, we've got 12 of those, and then nine of the medium sized petals. So it's a bit of math involved, but the good thing about making flowers is you could just keep going and you could add more and more and more, um, depending on how full you want your flower to be, which is um, a nice thing to do because you can make it completely personalized and you can change up how the final outcome is gonna be. So I've already cut loads of mine and you can see that mine are sculpted and they're actually have got some color on. So I'm gonna do that with some of the ones that I've got here. So I've got two of each size. And the way I've added color is I've actually added some Distress Oxide on there. So you could use Distress Inks, you could use um, permanent marker pens, anything, acrylic paints. There's loads of different options, but I just wanted to use the Oxide because they're quite pigmented, which is really nice. So I've got the, what shade have I got? The Victorian Velvet. And then I'm just gonna take our multi-tool with our Distress Head. Um, that's just attached. Literally, you just twist it oh, on and off, like so. So it comes with like a scalpel knife um, and a distress head, and then you can just get the blending head attachment, and then they've got these really handy sponges that you just peel off, which is great, because whatever color you're using, you can just peel off that sponge. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a rub in the ink, and then I tend to work from kind of the inside, or the bottom end of the petal, and just brush the color upwards, okay? And diffuse it up to the sort of midpoint of the petal. And I do like to do the back and front because you're going to probably see, particularly with the larger outside pieces, you are gonna see both sides and just move it in circular motions and that's gonna give you that diffused edge. So I'm just gonna do it really quickly with the other ones that I've got here. That's why I love using the, um, the blending tool. <laughs> there we go, lost for words there. Um, Cause it's just so quick and easy. And especially with these oxides cause they're really pigmented. 
Okay. And then with these smaller ones, you literally just need a little tiny bit. So if I carry on and do all of these. Okay, so once we've got those all done, they're gonna look like something like that. So we've got the back and front of everyone done, and then they've all got that little bit of color. The next thing you wanna do is sculpt. So I am gonna bring in our paper sculpting kit. So this comes with the foam mat, and then it comes with multiple tools. Um, and these ones you're gonna wanna use are these ones with the kind of ball head on them. Um, okay. So, just taking each individual petal and just taking that sort of ball steel head and just moving in circular motions until it kind of raises and then you get that cupped effect. So let's just take one more. And just really easily just apply some pressure mostly to the center and then you're gonna get that cupped effect. If you don't like the kind of crease effect that you get with the edges, you can just give your uh, cardstock a little bit of a spritz. So I'm just gonna, without getting too much water, <laughs> just give it a little bit of a spritz. And this means it's gonna be a little bit more malleable and you're not gonna get as many creases. Um, so you can just apply some pressure there and it's going to look a little bit more natural and you can even move it with your fingers as well which is great so you're still going to get those creases but just not as prominent <laughs> so you can probably see the difference in some of those so it's a little bit more softer and it kind of forms a little bit easier. So that's completely personal preference. I don't mind the creases. I think they look quite like natural really, but that is a little tip if you want to do that. Okay, so last one. I tell you what, I am going to quickly show you as well. You can also use the fold and form tool. So this is another great tool to use with um, any flower making um, and you can do that so you can just pop it through the little slit there and then you can pull it back and then you get that curve if you just want to do that so I could get that one petal and curve that like that so that's definitely an option um, to use alongside your paper sculpting kit so I could do that and then if I wanted just a little bit more shape I can just go in and add it so the combination of those two you're not gonna go wrong when you're making flowers, okay? So now we can start to think about assembling now that we've got everything together. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to start with your smaller petals first. So like I said, I did about three um, sets of each sort of petal die cut. So you're gonna have quite a lot and you're gonna to wanna to start off, I'll just show you how it starts. So I tend to wrap it so those two sides are kind of touching and I join them together ever so slightly with a hot glue gun. If you're worried about your fingers, I have got my thimbles off to the side so I will put those on, but just give it a bit of a press and that's how you're gonna start it. At this time, you can attach it on to your stem already. That's definitely an option. I think I might do that actually. So you can just pop a little bit of glue inside and pop it on. I'm just using a, a florist wire, like so. And then you've got the base of your petal, your flower, and that's where all your petals gonna start to originate from. So literally for every single petal now, you're just gonna want to add a little bit of glue, mostly around the bottom. With these beginning ones, you're gonna want to press them around a little bit more. So they're forming to that middle shape. But as you go outwards, it's gonna be a lot easier and you're gonna need probably um, a lot less glue to kind of form it into shape. And just kind of fill those gaps around the petal. So I'll just add one more. There 
there we go and you can already see it coming to life so I'm going to add all of those small petals and the medium sized petals and then we'll jump to adding the larger petals. Okay, so I've got three more to add now. So I'm just going to pop my glue. So you can see my flower has pretty much fully built up now. And I'm just gonna fill in those gaps with these last three leaves. Uh, petals, not leaves. <laughs> And you'll naturally see where the gaps are and where you need to pop your neck petal like it'll just come the more and more you add so don't be too precious about where you put them just naturally see where they kind of fit so there we have our finished flower so we've got all of that gorgeous shading on the outside and on the inside um, and now i think it needs a leaf so we've just, I've already cut one from some green cardstock. And what I like to do with my leaves is I like to place some wire behind them just to give them a little bit of shape. So I'm just gonna cut down a little bit of wire and then I just run a line of hot glue along the middle. This leaf does have a scoring line down the center so it's quite easy to sort of find where you want to place that. And then hold that down. And don't worry too much about being messy on the back. You could always cut another one and stick it on the back and hide that. But this is going to sit at the bottom and it's going to be covered by quite a lot of foliage and other flowers as well. So don't worry too much. And that just means that I can now give that a bend and I can manipulate it, which is really, really handy. So we're just gonna attach that onto the stem. I'm just gonna use some florist tape and I'm just gonna roll that around. So you just wanna get a little bit at the top, give it a twist and then just twist all the way down. It does have like a sticky texture, so it should stick by itself. I've got a lot of glue gun strings in the way. There we go. Um, so as you pull it and twist it, it should stick by itself. But if you feel like you need to add a little bit of glue at the top to get to sort of hold it in place at the beginning, then that's totally fine. And then as I'm about a quarter of the way down, I'm going to add on my leaf, give it a bit of a bend and just attach that. And that's the easiest way I've found to add leaves, not by like gluing them to the stem or anything, having them on a separate piece of wire and then just attaching it all with, um, with florist tape. So just give it a twist until you've attached both of them together. And I'm gonna tear that off and then just snip that down because this doesn't need to be overly long. And there we go. So I'm just gonna roll that at the top just ever so slightly just to make sure that's all secure. Give it a bit of a press. And there we go, we have our leaf attached to our flower and that means I can bend my flower and bend my leaf however I want to. And you could add multiple leaves if you wanted to. So that is our cardstock flower. So I'm gonna pop that to one side and I just wanted to show you another material, which again, I have pre-cut quite a lot of um, and I'm gonna use some sculpting foam. So I've got all my pieces already pre-cut. Um, I think I've got some sculpting foam in packaging, yeah. So our sculpting foam um, is like a very thin uh, foam, as the name suggests, and it comes in multiple different colors depending on which pack you get. So I believe this one is the 
bouquet set very fitting since we are making a bouquet and um, because this has the lighter shades in because I want to shade my sculpting foam and I'm going to show you guys how to do that and it's great for flower making because you can manipulate it really really easily and it looks really natural okay so I have again pre-cut all my pieces the same amount that I did with the cardstock so um, you don't have to worry about doing any extra pieces or anything like that um, they still make up the same way so I've got quite a lot of them and you can see I've started to add color to most of mine so again I'm going to bring in a couple that haven't got color and the way I've done it with this one is I've added some oil pastels so we have our Sizzix oil pastels and they come in a variety of shades matching to our cardstock and our sculpting foam um, you can also shade sculpting foam with distress oxides distress inks um, but oil pastels work really nicely because they blend really nicely so I'm just going to take that lighter pink and the darker pink and again in a similar way that we added the color with the distress oxide you just want to I've got some green on my finger there we go uh, just in kind of motions rather than a circular motion the way we did with the oxide actually just more of a upward stroke and then what I tend to do is I just tend, tend to take my finger and just blend that in and it just gives a really really nice soft effect so then add some darker shade and just blend it like so and you can go in and keep adding little bits and more to the bottom if you wanted to but you're going to get that overall shaded effect so I'll just show you again just on the smaller piece so just dragging it ever so slightly you don't have to be um, really neat with this or really cautious you can just kind of go in and just be a bit messy because as soon as you blend it out it's going to look a lot more professional so that's the kind of effect that we want we're going to do them on the back of every one as well like we did with the uh, cardstock ones and then once they are all um, all shaded we're going to start piecing them together Okay, so once you've got them all coloured, the next thing we need to do is sculpt. So you can use the paper sculpting kit if you want to. And with sculpting foam, you can heat it with a heat gun and then manipulate it. And that means it's going to be a little bit more malleable and manageable. So you can change the shape of the petal a little bit easier. But today I'm not going to add any heat because I want it quite full and flat if you're going to add heat you can really like scrunch it up um but for the gardenia flower it is quite a full open flower so i'm just going to take it literally in between my fingers and just gently i say gently because you can be quite this is a delicate foam so more times than i can count i have done this and ripped my petal um, which isn't the end of the world you can just cut more but you just want to really gently just prise it I'm probably going to rip it on camera now after I've just cursed myself. <laughs> but just pulling it apart and it's going to create that kind of cupped shape that we want. Okay, so that's the kind of effect that you're going to get. And you can do that again with these smaller ones. Again, really gently. You can just sort of tease it and keep going until you've done that with every petal and then we can start assembling. So all my petals are sculpted. So again, we're just gonna piece it all together exactly like we did with that paper one. Um, and then, yeah, we'll jump to the end when it's all done. Okay, so we've pieced all of those uh, petals on, we've got our leaf on, and that's the outcome for the sculpting foam one. So you can see the difference to the cardstock one it's a little um more kind of natural looking a little fuller um yeah but the same kind of effect so the only other thing that i have done is i've also pre-made some others so i've got another sculpting foam one i've actually got a cardstock one using some pearl cardstock from i believe this is our 
muted opulent cardstock pack yeah <laughs> uh, so this is the kind of pink pearlized one and then I've also got a couple of crepe paper ones in the center there so the yellow and pink one so I have shown how to piece together the gardenia flower with crepe paper before I believe in one of our other videos so if you're unsure of how to work with crepe paper or how to make up this particular flower in crepe paper then there's definitely a video for you guys to check out so I didn't want to run through it and touch on it in this video again so we've got our selection of flowers so I've got six here for my bouquet so I'm going to bring in my vase uh, so this is like a jug vase and what I've actually done is inside I've placed some bubble wrap so this is just a hack if you don't have what we normally pop in bouquets or at the bottom of vases is like um what's the word uh, florist oasis like like florist uh, polystyrene kind of um, so if you don't have that this is a good hack so you could do it with uh, tissue paper anything like that just to kind of give it some uh, resistance inside so it's going to help hold up our bouquet so I'm going to start off with my flowers so I'm going to bend my wires down if I need to make them a little bit smaller so I'm going to place these six flowers inside and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it out with faux foliage. You could make your own foliage, that's completely up to you. Um, I just found that I like to fill mine out with faux foliage just because it tends to look a little bit more realistic and it saves me a lot of time. Um, because I don't want to be making 60 stems of faux foliage. It will take me a long time if I did that. So I just prefer to do it this way, but again, completely personal preference. So I'm just kind of using that bubble wrap to like, just, just place those flowers in and you can manipulate the wire and then sort of pull them back out, change them around, do whatever you like. There's gonna be a lot of kind of mixing and matching with this. It's gonna take you some time to kind of arrange. I find flower arranging really therapeutic, actually. It's like one of my favorite things to do in, in my job. <laughs> so it's not the actual making of the flowers, it's once it's all finished and pretty looking and I can go in and just have a play. So I've just taken loads of sprigs of faux foliage. I've got loads of different ones and I'm just gonna pop them where I think they're gonna fit. Again, I'm going to press those down. I think they're a little high, actually. I have bent my my wires on my flowers, but you could trim them if you know that this is going to stay like this for a while. And just place. So let's move those around. And just keep going until you're kind of happy. I like to have a variety of faux foliage. You can get these from loads of different craft stores. Um, and I just t tend to reuse the same ones over and over again. If I'm not giving it as a gift or anything, I can just take pieces out and change it up. And I can tend to reuse different pieces of foliage for almost every season, usually except for maybe winter, where I'd want some uh, darker tones. Let's put one in there. So I've, I've kind of neglected this side. Let's pop some more over here. And it's completely up to you. Like I popped my um, flowers in first and then my foliage in second. But if you prefer to pop your foliage in first, then that is fine. Like just you do whatever you think looks best, whatever you prefer, especially if you use this as like a therapeutic time like I do, then just do whatever suits you. And you can just keep playing around until you're happy. I think I'm just gonna pop just a couple more pieces over here. Just maybe one up here. And try and separate your flowers as best as you can within the foliage. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously take your time, don't rush it. So we've got it almost finished. I think the last final touch, particularly if you're giving it as a gift, is really nice to add on a little, little bow. So I'm trying to pick the best side. I 
that's, that's a good side. Yeah. Oh, one of my foliage pieces have fallen out. Let's pop that back in. Okay. So I'm just going to add... No, I've decided I like this side better. That is one of my worst traits if uh, anybody who knows me is watching this video, like personally, they know that indecisiveness is my worst trait. It's, I'm constantly changing my mind. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got our little bow with our bouquet, our mixture of uh, sculpting foam, crepe paper and cardstock flowers and then filled out with all of our foliage. And look how stunning it looks. Perfect to give for a gift, um, birthdays, Mother's Days, anything like that. Um, or to just keep in your house and just brighten up your day because your flowers are never going to die then and you can have them all year round, which is a fantastic bonus to um, crafting your own flowers. So I think that is all for me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the Sizzix website. And if you get your hands on anything that I mentioned today from the cardstock, paper sculpting kit, anything like that, then you can use the code JESS20 and that'll give you some money off of um, yeah, all the products that I've used today. And if you recreate your own bouquet or you make your own flowers, it doesn't have to be the gardenia, anything, any florals. I love to see them. It's kind of my weakness. So please share them with me. Uh, share some images down below or across any of our socials. We'd love to see it. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you um, for my next video. But until then, stay safe and keep crafting. Thanks. Bye.